Okay, hello, hello. Welcome, hi there, Mike. So here we are at the Grindin' and Bass FM conch sessions. Did I, I said that right? Okay, thank you. And uh, today we're having a little, little chat with none other than Max Glazer, Federation Sound. Welcome to our country, bro. Really happy to be here for the first time. Thank you guys for, uh, for, for having us and uh, bringing us in. Cool. So this is your first time here. Obviously, you've been to Australia a couple of times and you, you were sort of a little bit curious about coming down and having a little look around? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sort of, um, you know, being someone who travels around the world playing playing reggae, it's, uh, I mean, I'm always interested to see what kind of scene there is because it's not something where everywhere in the world there's automatically uh, a huge, vibrant scene of, of dance hall and reggae necessarily. Um, so anytime I hear from people that, you know, oh, there's there's a scene of some sort, uh, it, it's always interesting to, to check it out and see what's going on. And, and what have you, uh, I mean, you probably you haven't been here for very long, no doubt. But what, what do you like from what you see so far yesterday? The I mean, festival. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I we got here yesterday and literally came straight from the airport to the festival. So I've seen uh, pretty much nothing but excellent things. So I'll just assume that it's all uh, great and wonderful. I mean, all I've seen since I've been here was a giant festival with thousands of people, uh, Chronics performing, Ice Cube performing, UB40. So that's all I know of New Zealand. So. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's not a bad start. Um, uh, speaking of like reggae and dancehall music scenes worldwide, you're from New York, and yeah. that's has one of the most respected reggae and dancehall scenes on the planet. Clearly, um, how was it like coming up in such a vibrant scene for you as somebody that was into that type of music? And like, how how did that have? It must have had quite an effect on you as a DJ now. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, being in New York and, I, you know, I, I come from originally growing up listening to hip hop, reggae, some rock. And then when I started DJing, playing hip hop, playing reggae, um, playing dance music, New York is a place that um, has equal amounts of, of all of those cultures and um, sort of coming but probably more from a background of hip hop. Um, there was so much overlap with reggae, especially in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, it, it, the, the two just intersected a lot and it was really interesting to me. Um, you would hear, it's kind of, you first hear uh, reggae and dancehall references and you talk about like uh, Boogie Down Productions and KRS-One, there was always a lot of reggae influence in that. And those things sort of led me sort of like through the channels of New York hip hop into more and more dance hall and then Supercat came shortly after that and and Shaba. So it was it was it was being in New York it was easy to if it was something that interested you and uh, you had an ear for it, uh, it, it, it was easy to, to find more of it. And was it easy to rub shoulders with these cats? Could you go down and see where they were jamming? Or did they have quite accessible parties for you, like street parties and club parties? That um, yeah, I mean, there, there was always a ton of stuff going on. Uh, more and more just, just from being around, you know, being around hip hop and being around DJs and, and, and just being in the circle of things. I mean, New York is a, is a massive city where with, even within any scene, there's um, just a ton, a ton of subcultures and, and subgenres of everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you wanted to get involved in it, um, you know, when I was sort of first DJing and first being around and first working in record stores, um, you could definitely um, go to where any of the people that, you know, whose music you were listening to, you could go see them perform, you could go see DOS FX perform, you could go see Shaggy perform somewhere, you know, from hip hop to reggae, I mean, to any kind of music, because Again, being in New York, which I mean, it, it's obviously got to be very different here. Is you don't necessarily have access to. It's uh, it's probably few and far between that that international artists come out here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, like you were saying, there's a lot of influences coming up, and you talked about hip hop, and then you moved into reggae. Um, Federation Sound's been going for about 15 years now. Is yeah, right? yeah. This year, this year is 15 years. We started in 1999. And I had been DJing prior to that for a long time, uh, as had all of the people that we started Federation Sound with, myself, Kenny Mees, who's my current partner, um, had been DJing for many years in Philadelphia. I was based in New York. And then the third person we started it with was Cypher Sounds, who uh, went on to, he's currently afternoon radio show, radio host on Hot 97 in New York, does the um, 
podcast with Rosenberg, Juan Epstein, so um, kind of like steeped in hip hop, and he came from working with Funkmaster Flex. Um, so the three of us had all been DJing, doing our own thing before that, and then um, came together and put Federation together in 1999. And I mean, it's a, it's a long lasting uh, sound system and it's got a huge name. Um, like, did that happen? Was it an organic process or did you guys like put your heads together and like, right, we're, good, we're gonna form a sound system? Because I mean, it's a commitment, right? To sort of. Yeah, I'm not, uh, you know, unfortunately in retrospect, I'm not that kind of planner. Um, it was just something that we kind of, I mean, the, the, the actual way that it started was um, Ken, we had voiced uh, dub plates with Junior Reed. So Junior Reed was at a dub plate studio in Philadelphia and Kenny said, Kenny was, you know, sort of really always into doing remixes and in the MPC days and kind of remixing dance hall onto hip hop beats and Junior Reed was gonna be in the studio. So we put a little bit of money together, him and I split it, I think. We voiced a Junior Reed dub plate and it said our individual names in it, but there was no sound system name. We didn't think of it, there was no time. And uh, it was cool, so we had this Junior Reed dub plate, but a few months later, Capleton came to the studio and Kenny said, all right, we should put together some money and, and voice dubs, but we've really got to have a sound set. We're now, now, now we're committing. We're, this is our second set of dub plates and we're really spending money, maybe spending, I don't know, a thousand dollars. And in those, you know, it was a considerable amount a of, lot mo of money. Yeah. yeah, it was a considerable amount of money. And uh, so we were like, all right, we've, We've got to we've got to come together with uh, with the sound system name for this. And Federation was actually a name that Cipher and I had been using. Uh, it was obviously in the days of carrying crates of records, so we had used. Cipher actually came up with the name. Uh, it was myself, Cipher, one or two other DJs, and really just our extended crew uh, of all of the people that rolled with us, which was many, many, many in those days. To kind of have something to identify all of our people, shout everybody out in the club, and. Um, Kenny said, if we came, so we said, all right, let's come up with the name. And he was like, what about that? We're kind of already using that for this other purpose. So we just made it Federation Sound and uh, the name stuck. Do you, do you know, was that, so that was your first dub plate, the Junior Reed? Junior Reed was our first dub plate, but it doesn't say Federation Sound right. in it. It just says, I believe in the intro, my name and Kenny's name. And we were just so excited to uh, have the acapella of it to be able to remix which was the whole purpose of paying, I don't know, two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever it was at the time. And so do you know how many dub plates you guys have now? I have no idea. Uh, I know that it's uh, many, 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 but also nowhere close to enough. It, it's, it's endless. You could never have enough. And it's a really, really expensive hobby. And, and they're still relevant. I mean, because like, we still call them dub plates, but most of the time we're dealing with waves, right? You know, like digital files. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the name that's stuck. I mean, sort of like the, the OG name that actually is more, I think, a, a, a better description. Uh, you know, a lot of um, kind of older guys would hear them call them specials. The name dub plate is definitely uh, the one that's stuck for sure. Um, obviously, it's changed. Digital music has changed, like, Reggae, reggae music, uh, DJing as well. Like we're just talking about how that's changed the, the concept of dub plates. Like how how else has that changed how you DJ? Well, I mean personally, I would like to thank. Uh, I can assume all of you will take credit for it. The, the good people of New Zealand for creating uh, Serato and Scratch you're Live. Welcome, you're I, welcome. You're welcome. I, <laughs> that's my stance on it. I mean, you know, I. I love records. I grew up DJing. Uh, I love record shopping. I grew up working in record stores, um, but it probably wouldn't, uh, I probably wouldn't be standing here um, talking to you as a result of being here and in Australia DJing uh, if I were still having to carry records around. But it, it's enabled me to move around the world with a backpack and be able to DJ and play music, which for me, the, the, the main point of it, as much as I love records, is I love the music that's on them. Um, like staying on the idea of digital and technology, like you, you were talking earlier about uh, Radio Lily, yep. which is, uh, is that's your own personal radio station? Uh, Are you sharing they, that with uh, sort of like a, a collaborative concept or? It's, it's, something, it's that? something that I started um, as a part of a, a, a restaurant business in New York called Miss Lily's, which uh, one of my best friends is a partner in. And they had a, 
I have had been doing for many years. We do a Federation Invasion podcast, which we've been doing for over seven years. Um, various other online radio that I've been involved with. I did a show for three and a half years on East Village Radio before they shut down. Um, so I had a lot of experience doing online radio and um, was there was just an opportunity to, to set up and be, I was gonna be involved in helping my friend with the music in this Jamaican restaurant in New York anyway. And then we said, you know, it would be really easy to just plug this in and, uh, you know, fairly inexpensively, a few thousand dollars and set it up as a uh, as an online radio station. And then we can take what we're doing here and, you know, make it kind of be even more impactful, create more awareness of the place um, and then also just have another place to play more music. OK, man. So we got to wrap this up quickly, but um, I I'm just curious to know what's the coolest party you reckon you've ever did here? Man, I would. I th there's no quick answer to that. There's <laughs> apart have, from tonight. I have a no. DJ. I, I, I am two days in the future compared to New York, but I have not. We have a DJ tonight. I'll say. You can ask me that tomorrow. Um, I mean, there, there, there's there's different categories. Um, DJing in Jamaica for the first time is probably one of those most amazing things that you can ever do. As someone who, you know, basically at this point, my life is playing reggae and playing dance hall, but not coming from Jamaica and not being Jamaican, uh, no matter what you know about it, no matter how much you listen to it, no matter how much you love it and live it every day, doing it and seeing it and living it in Jamaica is is an incredible different experience. And, um, you know, it's you, you have to do it. If it's what you do, you have to do it at some point. Um, so, I mean, doing that is, like I said, I could give you a list in different categories, but <laughs> let's let's leave it at that. Okay, man. And um, just to wrap it up, uh, you, you are here in New Zealand and you're in uh, the future. You're, you're ahead of time. And what does the future, what does 2015 hold for Max Glazer? Um, I mean, I, the, the plan was, and it's succeeded so far, is to kind of spend the last part, the, the, the end of 2014, um, touring and uh, going some places where I've been but haven't been playing dance hall. So we're here uh, in New Zealand. I'll get home, you know, for Christmas, take a little break, and then, uh, you know, uh, want to definitely work on more production, more original production, which is something that I always want to do. Find a little time to do it in between. Um, continue touring. We're going to kind of like working on some bigger um, touring presentations of, you know, Federation Sound uh, with artists, with dancers and doing different things like that. Um, you know, hopefully some uh, possibly some works with Chronics in the New Year's, but we'll just uh, we'll, we'll leave that to be seen and you'll get to talk to him as well. Cool. Hey, thanks very much, everybody. Little little round of applause, maybe. Thank you so much coming in today. Thank you.